Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. It's me Daniel. I'm really happy that you're here today and today I would like to talk about the topic of programming languages and yes why are programming languages so important for us as software testers. When you have seen a lot of my videos already on my channel where I was talking about test automation tools, uh, do software testers really need technical skills or what skills do they need and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the, the, the mindset or the attitude of saying like, hey, software testers need to be able to write code. Yeah. However, having technical skills and being able to write test automation with a programming language helps you, of course, to maybe find a, another job find another a next step in your career and also to contribute to the development team in a more technical way. And for that, you need to learn programming languages, right? And you need to have the skills of doing so. And, and that's, that's brought me basically to, my, to this topic for today, for that video, uh, to talk about programming languages and what are programming languages that I think are helpful for you as software testers to maybe to get started or to learn a new software, uh, to, new, to learn a new programming language. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. So let's take a look at today's video, which is called the nine best programming languages for test automation for you to learn and to, to, to upskill or to uplevel your skills. Um, as always, like the video, share it with your network to support me and leave a subscription, of course. And now let's take a look at the nine programming languages that I brought for you today. So the very first one that I brought for you is Python. Python has a really easy to learn syntax. It's really great language for beginners. So in case you have no knowledge about any programming languages, Python might be the right choice for you to start with because it's, as I said, easy to learn and to understand. Um, also, the cool thing about Python, it supports a vast um, uh, amount of libraries. So in case you would like to do something specific, um, there are like libraries available that you can just plug into the, to the ecosystem, to your IDE, and you can use it. Yeah? It has a strong open source community. So in case you have a problem, you have some, some question that you would like to raise, go and check online the open source community of Python. There is, I bet, an answer already somewhere or there is somewhere, someone who can help you with your problem. So that's cool as well. Um, it also supports lots, uh, lots of testing frameworks are supported by Python. That's what I wanted to say. That's also cool. So in case you would like to, to write in a specific testing framework, Python is a supported programming language by many of those. Yeah. Python also has own testing frameworks or like used uh, like PyTest or PyUnit, for example, are commonly used for, for Python projects at all. So this is also something to, to start with in case you would like to know about, more about testing with Python. Yeah. And last but not least, as I mentioned it before, it's well integrated in established tools such as Selenium or Appium. So in case you would like to write a Selenium tests or Appium tests, Python is your programming language for you to go. That's good. So what's the next one? JavaScript. Um, yes, it's one of the most commonly used pro programming languages out there on the internet. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a script programming language, a scripting programming language, as I said as well. It has a lot of libraries available to extend it. I mean, I think there's a library for JavaScript for almost everything. Yeah. So go check out and then you can, um, similar to Python, you can extend the, the, the feature set of the programming language. Uh, similar to Python, it has a huge developer community and testing community as well. So lots of testing frameworks are uh, able to use JavaScript as the programming language. Um, as I just said, many testing frameworks use JavaScript as a basis. And, and it can be used for tools such as Cypress, Selenium, Playwright and more. So that's also uh, important for you to know. And also, if you if your developers using JavaScript, it might be also a good idea to to pick JavaScript for your test automation language. But that's the rule basically for all the programming languages that I, I brought for you today. Depending on your project scope, the project languages, you should think of using the same programming language as the developers because then you can get the support for writing the test automation as well. TypeScript, uh, similar um, as a JavaScript. I mean, it's it's a superset of JavaScript. Yeah, 
and it basically enhances the JavaScript experience with, for example, static types or type annotations and more. And it's a more, more strict version of, of the JavaScript environment. Um, similar to, to JavaScript and also you can use it for to support uh, all the JavaScript functions. Um, and it's often used in large scale web applications these days. Yeah? Similar like that, it's used in front end relating testing frameworks as well. And similar to JavaScript, I mean, since this is a superset of JavaScript, you can see it's already like supported by tools like Cypress, Test Cafe, Playwright and others. So TypeScript might also be a choice for you to pick. Yay, let's get to Java. Um, yeah, Java is one of the most used programming languages in the world, object-oriented programming language. With uh, It's not a script language, it's a, it's a compiling, like a compiler language. Um, and yes, I mean, Java, I don't know for how long it's there, since, since almost ever, I have the feeling, yeah. And you can use it for all kinds of application types, yeah. From web applications to backend applications, you can use Java for it. Um, it's used in many, many frameworks, testing frameworks, I mean, Selenium, Appium, and others. And it's supported by the uh, by by many of the testing frameworks. So from unit to UI testing, that's also important to know. So Java is really like a, a Swiss knife these days. So in case you would like to do something with uh, with Java, it's it of of course it's a good choice. Yeah. Um, similar to Java, there's C Sharp. It's also an object-oriented programming language developed by Microsoft. Uh, it also supports similar to Java in many different application types. And also, many test frameworks use C Sharp as a basis. For example, like XUnit, MS Test, or NUnit. So they use JavaScript. Uh, to, sorry, C Sharp as a basis. And similar to Java, a lot of testing frameworks support it too. Uh, let's get to the next one, which is Ruby. Uh, Ruby is also a really popular language with an easy to learn syntax. I would say it's it's similar to Python. Maybe the Python developers now like punishing me or like the Ruby community is punishing me for that statement. But I used uh, Ruby some some while ago and I find it really easy to get into the language. It's li really lightweight and also um, it has a really great support for libraries and frameworks and that's really cool. So if you would like to get fast results, Ruby might also be a programming language for you. It has a huge developer community and also popular testing frameworks like Capybara, RSpect, they're for example written in Ruby and many testing frameworks support Ruby as well. So you can see there's a lot of stuff already covered as well with Ruby. Um, another language that I brought for you today is Golang. Uh, it's a commonly known as Go and was created by Google and it's a statically typed programming language. Uh, it's also really easy to learn from, from a syntax point of view. It has a centralized dependency service, which is worth mentioning here. And Ginkgo or Go Convey are testing frameworks in the Golang ecosystem. So in case the developers using Golang in the project, this might be a language for you to pick up as well. Yeah. And that's the cool part of it. And it's also what was one of the one of the many goals that Google had in mind is that testers can build reliable own testing frameworks with Go. So that's important for you as well to know. So language number eight is Kotlin. Yes, it's a modern programming language, again, developed by Google. Um, it's fully compatible with the Java and runs in the Java virtual machine. That's worth mentioning as well. It has a much shorter syntax compared to Java and better readability. And it was initially developed and created to make Android development easier. Uh, and I think a couple of years ago, I don't know when it was, was 2019 or 18, um, Kotlin was made like the, the first citizen programming language by Google for Android applications. And since then, Kotlin is also used for backend applications and these kind of topics. And it's a great language for, for you also to get started. And yeah, as I said here already, it's used for automation as well on Android and, and also for backend applications. Yeah? And, and last but not least, of course, there should also be a programming language for the, in the Apple ecosystem. It's a user-friendly language developed by Apple, Swift. Um, it was again initially also built for uh, iOS applications to, to replace Objective-C. Um, but it's again similar and easier syntax compared to Objective-C. Similar what happened on the, on the Java Kotlin side, it happened also on the Apple side. Um, it's used for um, automating of iOS apps um, with XUI test. And for example, Appium supports also Swift. So in case you're a mobile tester, mobile developer, 
I mean, if you're a mobile developer anyways, you know Swift or, uh, by heart, I guess. But if you're in mobile testing and you would like to automate only iOS apps, um, Swift might be the programming language for you to use. In case you implement both, like App, uh, using Appium for Android and iOS, Swift might not be ideal. Then I would rather go for another language to, to support here. And that brings me already to the summary for today. Yeah, As you have seen, there are like plenty, plenty programming languages to choose from. And these were just like nine known programming languages out there. And there are like a couple of more. I mean, this, the list is by no means complete here. Yeah? Um, so really take, take, uh, take your time and do your research. And the best thing you, that you can do is um, search and, and not talk to your developers what are they, the programming languages used in your tech stack. And every programming language has its pros and cons. That's also important to know. So you have to do your own research. Yeah? And then, of course, pick the one that fits best to your tech stack. I mentioned that. Talk to your developers. What are they using for programming this stuff? And then pick the right one that fits. Yeah? Um, compare them if you have time. That brings me back to the pros and cons. Really like make a list or like what are your um, the, the, the apps that you would like to implement or the, the framework that you would like to build. What is the other things that you would like to automate? Is it web? Is it mobile? Is it something hybrid in between? And based on that list, you may should make the decision on finding the right programming language for you. Um, uh, it's also important to, to to rethink like hey maybe I should learn a new language from time to time to see like what's what's going to happen from coming from the Java world in the JavaScript world how are things done over there or what is with Golang what's with Ruby and these kind of topics just to learn new things new patterns new coding styles from time to time to 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 yeah to get new new skills and stuff like that. Also now with all the AI and ChatGPT in place, it's also um, a good uh, learning start for you. So for example, if you're familiar with, let's say Java, and you have some, some classes or some, some demo projects written in Java, put them into ChatGPT and ask GPT to, to translate it over to, to Python, to Golang, any other language that you would like to learn. And you get a really first idea on how this can look like in a different programming language. And that's cool. And brings me to the last question. What language do you use on a daily basis? Leave it down below in the comments. I would love to hear from you. What kind of programming languages are you using in your project? I bet there are people out there who would use multiple programming languages to, yeah, to, to survive in the daily madness of testing and, and development. Uh, I would love to see your comments down below. And with that, I'm thank you. That, thanks for coming by. Let me know in the comments, as I said, what language are you using? Leave a comment, leave a like, leave a subscription as always. Thank you for coming by and see you next time.